What is up, Comeback Period Nation, and welcome back to the Comeback Period here on YouTube. I'm your host, Brandon Anderson, and we are here for the final Week 3 game preview, and that is none other than the St. Louis Battle Hawks traveling to San Antonio to face the undefeated Brahmas, who are 2-0. This is a critical game for the Battle Hawks and the Brahmas. They can continue their undefeated uh, streak, which, again, A.J. Smith has a history of doing very well when it comes to being undefeated. Man, oh man, if you look back at the Houston Roughnecks in 2020 and what he did with P.J. Walker and that offense, there's a lot of similarities uh, heading into week three and just what he has done for the Brahmas. A little shaky last weekend, but this upcoming weekend, I think they're going to be heading into San Antonio back home, and it's going to be a show to not miss. So let's go ahead and dive into week three preview, starting off with the UFL's official injury report. We look at the St. Uh, Louis Battlehawks first, and of course we have Freedom Akinmula Dunn, uh, who essentially has an illness currently right now, and with that um, defensive end man, there was nothing recorded for Wednesday, and then yesterday he did not practice, so we're not quite sure with that illness if he will play on Sunday or not, but we'll keep an eye on that. Then we have Ben Dukula, uh, free safety, right hand injury, full uh, participation on Wednesday and full on Thursday. Looks like he'll be ready to go for game time on Sunday. And then we have Mike Rose. Uh, middle linebacker, left ankle injury, limited practice on Wednesday and Thursday. Another player to keep an eye on to see if he will be playing this upcoming weekend. Then we switch over to the Brahmas. The Brahmas injury report list is massive. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So uh, Bo Pete, uh, Keys, cornerback, right groin injury, limited practice both days. Uh, Delon De Delonte Scott. Outside linebacker, right shoulder, did not practice either uh, day. Do not expect him to be playing this upcoming uh, Sunday. Then we have another outside linebacker, Jamar Jones, right elbow injury limited both days. Um, that would probably be a game uh, time decision at this point. Uh, Jalen Dalton, defensive tackle, neck injury, did not practice on Wednesday, but limited practice on Thursday. Um, Anthony McFarlane Jr., right shoulder injury, running back, full practice both days. He should be ready to go for game time. And then we have Dar Darius Phillips, cornerback, left hip injury, uh, did not practice on Wednesday, limited on Thursday. Uh, Kayvon, Kayvon Pay uh, Payton, defensive tackle, abdomen injury, full practice Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Derek Kelly, the second offensive lineman, left hamstring, limited practice both days. Zach McLeod, outside linebacker. There's a lot of outside linebackers with injuries. Left ankle injury, did not practice uh, both days. And then we have Landon Akers, wide receiver, right hamstring, limited both days. So, again, San Antonio's banged up, but I fully suspect they will be at their highest level still heading into this game. So, let's go ahead and dive into this article from uh, James Larson from Pro Football Newsroom. Week three, the UFL will wrap up with a battle between two giants in the XFL conference. The San Antonio Brahmas host the St. Louis Battlehawks playing each other for the first time since week one. Week one of the XFL 2023 season, which is absolutely crazy to think. Since then, a lot has changed, at least for San Antonio. They are a completely new team with Wade Phillips at the helm. So far, the Brahmas have won their first two games. In week two, they put together a remarkable comeback effort to top Memphis. Offensive coordinator A.J. Smith got them on the right track at the last moment, and they scored the go-ahead touchdown with three seconds left to play. For the Battlehawks, they were able to make their home debut last week, setting a modern spring football record of 40,000 317 fans in attendance. It was a magical night with a magical walk-off winner from kicker Andre Smith's uh, St. Louis will now have to come down from that high and focus on picking up a massive road win that could push them to first place in the XFL conference. Let's take a look at the key factors ahead of this UFL matchup. Quarterback play. San Antonio Brahmas love to throw the football. Chase 
Garbers attempted 40 passes in their win over Memphis and ended up uh, compiling almost 300 passing yards on the day. When Garbers is hot, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the, this league. He can make throws at almost every angle and has excellent touch on the ball. According to PFF, Garbers currently has a 74.3 offensive grade on the season, which is above average. His play has been uh, relatively inconsistent from quarter to quarter, but these are growing pains we accept, expect from a young quarterback making his fr uh, first professional starts. We know what to expect when it comes to A.J. McCarron. A St. Louis legend absolutely lit it up on Saturday night, throwing for 248 yards and two touchdowns as the Bad Hawks came away with a big-time divisional win. This week, though, McCarron is going to have to focus on getting the ball out of his hands efficiently. St. Louis, or St. Louis, sorry, San Antonio's pass rush is one of the fiercest in the UFL, doing an excellent job of getting to the quarterback quickly. This is something that offensive coordinator Bruce Grakowski will have to keep in mind, no doubt. Standout playmakers. So where do we even start? James says both of these franchises are stacked with unbelievable talent. Looking at the St. Louis Battlehawks, their receivers have been playing impressive football. Marcel Aitman, in particular, has taken over the clear wide receiver in offense. He posted 114 receiving yards and two touchdowns on Saturday, completely controlling Arlington's defense from start to finish. Um, Mateo Durant was a... Um, was re relevant or revelation this week, I think is what he's saying. Uh, he was a healthy scratch in week one, but ended up jumping into action this week, totaling over a hundred rushing yards, including the run that set up the game winning kick. Durant should be running back one heading into the into this slate of games. San Antonio's offense is electrifying when it's humming. Uh, Marquise Stevenson, uh, John Trey, John Trey Kirkland, Justin Smith, and Cody Latimer have all made plays when necessary over the past two weeks. Stevenson is separating himself as one of the top wideouts in the league and is bound to continue this offense uh, generates as this offense generates stronger chemistry from week to week. For the Brahmas, can their running backs get going this week? Anthony McFarlane was nowhere to be found on Saturday. Granted, A.J. Smith mentioned that some run plays they had called ended up not seeing the light of day due to penalties. Speaking of which, the Brahmas committed 14 penalties for over 140 yards. That cannot happen again. And we talked about this on those post-game recaps last weekend that penalties were killing some of these teams. And the Brahmas were one of them. They, lucky enough, got that drive off in the last minute of the game or two drives off in the last minute of the game to come back and win it. But penalties, they were shooting themselves in the foot with these penalties. 140 yards is outrageous. Um, defensive matchup, the... Um, Brahma's pass rush will be tough for St. Louis to slow down. In just two games, San Antonio has notched seven sacks, making opposing quarterbacks' lives miserable. Tim Ward, Wyatt Ray, uh, Kayvon Patton, Jordan Williams, etc. They have all been having excellent seasons. In the secondary, San Antonio has implemented what defensive coordinator Will Reed calls a bend-don't-break strategy. That was elevant or evident in week two where they had they held memphis to four field goals in the red zone jordan mosley has been having an outstanding year so far at safety and led the team with 10 tackles last weekend for st louis uh, PETA has been a much-needed addition to their front seven. The XFL's Defensive Player of the Year was on a mission against Arlington, sacking Perez twice and racking up three tackles for a loss for losses. Generally speaking, though, the Battlehawks' line has some work to do. Their run defense hasn't been ideal the last two weeks. Across the board, the Battlehawks' defense is middle of the pack. It is much stronger unit than last year, though – so as the new pieces continue to build chemistry with one another, those numbers should improve. Special teams. Now, on the special team side of things, San Antonio has a major shakeup heading into this game. Their kicker, Donald De La Haye Jr., destroying, fractured his neck, making a tackle. This has led him to be placed on the IR in return, uh, or in turn, uh, Ryan Santos, 
I believe it's Santos, has signed with the Brahmas. This will be a challenge for San Antonio as they have yet to attempt a field goal this year and now might have to do it with a brand new piece. Andre Smith uh, is building confidence from week to week with the Battle Hawks. Meanwhile, Sterling Horfisher Fritcher, Hofritcher, and Alex Matheson have been two of the best at their respective positions this year and are making the case to be on the all UFL team at the end of the season. Um, when we look at the coaching matchup, obviously with San Antonio, you have Wade Phillips, who has done an impressive job of bringing his winning attitude to San Antonio, a team that desperately needed a change after what was an underwhelming 2023 season. Phillips has been uh, one of the top staffs in the entire UFL, and his team is 2-0 and on track with Houston a year ago. Wade Phillips gave some thoughts on the upcoming game and his expectations for San Antonio. The good teams are the ones that can perform under pressure, and I thought we did that last week. I look at us and see how we can improve. Then we evaluate St. Louis and try to get matchups we want. Take advantage of people we think aren't strong enough on their team. The technical stuff with what coverages they run and what fronts we need to run against them. They've got good pass rushers that we have to be aware of. AJ is a good quarterback. Did really well last year, and they have almost the same team. We're trying to get everything together as a team right now, so it's a little bit different for us. On the other side of things, St. Louis Battlehawks have Anthony Beck. Beck, the players coach himself, as we've talked about over the weeks, got St. Louis back on track this week, something that is evident in his day-to-day operations is that he will take responsibility for mistakes made by the team. Anthony has a very high expectation for the Battlehawks team, especially after missing the playoffs last year. That's behind them and the playoff and a playoff berth is now in their sights. James, final thoughts on this game. Truthfully speaking, this is a game that could go either way. Neither team feels like the true favorite, with San Antonio's main advantage being that they will be playing at home this week. With Mateo Durant's resurgence in Gratikowski's offense, though, St. Louis could ride that high if trends don't change. Uh, McFarland has to be, have a big game to match Mateo's production. Regardless of an out, of the outcome, one would expect this game to come down to the wire in San Antonio. The same way pretty much every UFL game has gone so far. Fans, grab your popcorn as this showdown kicks off at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, airing on ABC. So, let me know in the comments your thoughts on this game. I think this will be the highlight game of the week. I think it will be one of the best games we get out of the week or the weekend, and to be honest with you, I I still am taking San Antonio to defeat St. Louis in this one. Um, I think that they are just an unstoppable team. I think they are going to very much mimic what um, a lot of A.J. Smith's offensive have, and Wade Phillips as a head coach, I think is a huge part to this. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that notification button because later today um, we will be releasing a video talking about the UFL financial stability and what uh, some information that has uh, come out today about a lot of financial pieces to the league that could mean a lot of good things going forward. So we'll see you back here on the next one. Have a wonderful one and make sure you tune in tomorrow after the Arlington Renegades and DC Defenders game for post-game coverage from Arlington um, from Choctaw Stadium on the field. Me and Angie will be doing that post game wrap up and uh, kind of going from there. So we'll see you back here on the comeback period. Have a great one, everyone.